Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, well, so, so there are a couple things here. So, so the, 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 the basic gist there was um, that response, hey, you're, you're opening up things in the Old Testament to mockery. Um, you know, notice that's the parallel of you shouldn't criticize jihad because then people can point out that, that there's violence in the Bible. Well, there are lots of differences between violence in Islam and violence in the Bible, right? Huge differences. Namely, you eventually get to the final marching orders, and the final marching orders of Christianity are different from the final marching orders of Islam. So the takeaway message is very different about violence, right? You can find violence in it. You can find violence in almost any history book. We're not talking about finding violence in the book. We're talking about certain specific things about the kinds of violence that aren't similar between the Bible and the Quran. Um, so it, that's a that's a strange objection, but th this seems to be a parallel to that of you know don't don't mock that claim about Muhammad because then they might mock mock your claim about uh, about the Bible. But but yeah, you you guys are you guys are right that um, either it, either you think that there's no better reason to believe the Bible than there is to believe the, the Muslim sources. In which case, I have no idea why you would invite a Muslim to Christianity if you don't think the case is is any better or it's it's any more true. Um, so you either think that, that they're, they're on the same level in terms, of, in terms of flaws, weaknesses, and so on, or you believe that the Bible is superior, in which case, mock away. Go ahead, mock away. But suppose you read the Old Testament and you're confused about all of these passages. Well, do you have good reasons to still believe that it's the Word of God, even if you're confused, even if you couldn't find any justification for these passages? Yeah, you've got Jesus rising from the dead. And so I would say, look, even if, oh, man, I don't know what to do there, but I know Jesus rose from the dead, so I'm, I'm, I'm still good. I'm still good with my, with my salvation here. Well, a lot of folks would like to say that he has artificially limited things by ignoring the Old Testament. Because you've got the Amorites and the Canaanites and all that kind of stuff uh, uh, going on. And <laughs> go away. There is evidently uh, my, my computer really wants to go to El Capitan. You cannot. It would destroy a bunch of my programs. Go away. Um, anyways, uh I realize that those texts in the Old Testament are troubling to people, but again, I've listened to enough sharp Muslim apologists who will point to a few texts in the New Testament, like the one where Jesus tells a parable and he seems to be referring to himself, and toward the end he says, now, now bring those men before me who refuse to have me rule over them and kill them before me in my sight. And we're, we're talking about judgment. A bunch of stuff in the book of Revelation about stuff like that. On the other hand, I think that Jay, while he has admitted that uh, the violence in the Old Testament is much greater than in the Quran, and these are his words, which, are written, which I've written down as soon as he spoke them, he... <laughs> He, he seems to think that the New Testament presents a different picture of morality, and we should guard against this. He brought me actually greetings from our good friend uh, James White, and James White uh, uh, has written in his book, The God Who Justifies, on page uh, 61, uh, in response to those Christians who may think, okay, that was the God of the Old Testament, now in, in the New Testament things are different. In response, White has this to say, there is only one God. And the God of the Old Testament is identical in every way to the God of the New. So we cannot uh, look at two different moralities here. Why is the New Testament then different? Uh, in his article on Jihad in the Blackwell Companion to the Quran, the Jewish writer, Reuben Firestone, explains uh, the situation in which the, both the Talmud and the New Testament was, was, were written. Here we're talking about the context. Now the context here was different. The New Testament and the Talmud were written at a time when Rome dominated and there was no hope either from among the Jews or from among the Christians that somehow a political struggle will result in any victory. So a passive approach was taken. 
And this is particularly in page number 313 of the Blackwell uh, Companion to the Quran, in which Reuven Firestone has, um, um, has laid out this case. And one can see this to be true. Jesus, according to the New Testament, was the Messiah who was expected to rule on the throne of David. So that the verse that was quoted about this says that God said to him, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The imagery was that Je Jesus would sit in a political rule on a throne that was left vacant by David. And that God would have it such that Jesus would be resting his feet on the slain bodies of his enemies. It was to be a political battle, a military confrontation. But when that could not work, the New Testament writers, writing in a milieu in which they dared not be represented as the terrorists of their day, they wrote things like Romans 13 and 1 Peter, in which it is entirely pacifist. You submit yourself to the ruling authority of the day, do not resist. And this is why Jesus is represented in the Gospel of John as saying, my kingdom is not of this world. So this is a later rewriting. John, the last of the four Gospels now, takes the Messiahship and gives it a different meaning. It's not anymore about sitting on the throne of David in this life, at least not in the first coming. But when he comes back, the book of Revelation tells us what, tells us what he will do. He will have a major confrontation with his enemy. His tongue itself will be of a sword. And he will slay everyone except the false prophet and, uh, and the Antichrist who will be thrown into the fire. Everyone else, according to the book of Revelation, will be slain by Jesus when he comes back and engages the enemy in that major battle. So the battle motif is present in the Old and in the New Testament. Christians are peaceful, but despite the Bible. And some Muslims are violent, but despite the teachings of the Quran. Thank you.